The Accidental Entrepreneur is brought to you with the help of our sponsor, A. Weber, the world's leading small business email marketing and automation service provider. Since 1998, A. Weber has helped more than 1 million small businesses and entrepreneurs through its suite of web-based email marketing, automation tools, and education. A. Weber, the best option when it comes to marketing your business. The podcast is also brought to you by the Alternative Board. Since 1989, the Alternative Board, or TAB, has been one of the leading peer advisory and business coaching organizations for independent business owners and CEOs across the world. By facilitating peer advisory boards, private one-on-one coaching, and strategic planning services, TAB helps business owners improve their businesses in ways that change their lives. And be sure to check out our affiliate sponsor, One of One Productions, the New Jersey-based podcast studio that produces and edits both audio and video podcasts. They sell equipment for the avid podcaster and have even created a guesting kit exclusively for our listeners. And be sure to support the podcast by ordering some logo merchandise from our online store. Listen to all of our sponsors' commercials later in this episode and follow their links in the show notes to learn more about their products and services. Oh, my mic was down there. Okay. Uh, welcome back to another episode of the podcast and another great guest today. Excited to talk to Ken. Ken's a little bit unique. He's not exactly out there running a business, but he kind of is, and he's kind of changing the world. And he used to be in corporate, and I thought his story was so compelling. He had some great things to share that uh, it would be a great conversation. He's also a fellow, po- fellow podcaster, so although he's hitting the road, and I'm doing it behind a mic and a and a screen. So uh, we'll see where that goes. If you're listening on your favorite uh, audio directory, be sure and give us a five-star review if you can give it to us. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, like us, and all the other bells and whistles. So let's get on with the show. The information provided in these episodes is for entertainment purposes only. It is not a guarantee of success or to be construed as advice of any kind. You should always seek advice from local licensed professionals before making any decisions. The dictionary defines an entrepreneur as a person who organizes and manages any enterprise, especially a business, usually with considerable initiative and risk. People often start a business without much choice, perhaps due to a job loss or just being dissatisfied at work, and they come up with an idea they just know can be successful. They become entrepreneurs by accident. That is to say their success or failure happens by accident, not with intention. My name is Mitch Beinhacker. I'm a corporate attorney and a business advisor. You're listening to The Accidental Entrepreneur, my podcast about how to achieve success on purpose, not by accident. Join me along with our monthly guests where we share our knowledge and help you get a hold of your business. And now on to today's episode. You like that uh, professional opening there? little, uh, the, the read, you like that? The dictionary, I wrote that myself. I- I, uh, it was a little disturbing when you got to the entrepreneur part, to be honest. <laughs> well, as an attorney, I always felt I should have a disclaimer and nobody's listening and thinking I'm giving legal advice, but I probably don't need Yeah. It. I'd kind of hit home the accidental why I wasn't, you know, the entrepreneur part kind of was, right. it, it hurt. It hit a little, so- it hit hard, I should say. That's funny. Well, Ken, I appreciate you joining me. I don't know where you are now, but I, last time we spoke, you were on your deck and you're traveling around, but I know you're not on the road today, right? I'm not on the road. I'm kind of back. Uh, I was, well, I'm on the road, I guess, permanently right now. I'm, I'm home. I'm intentionally homeless. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm intentionally well, homeless. In someone's bedroom, it looks like. I'm in someone's bedroom. I'm in, I'm in my sister's house. So I was okay. at the, the lake house last time we chatted. Right. But off the road, I wasn't, I'm not, wasn't actively interviewing. And, um, so Got I'm kind of, I'm back in Atlanta and had taken a little break. And so I'm getting back on the road next week. Right. So, but yeah. if anybody's watching this on, YouTube, you know, the bohemian side of your life, you got long hair and you, you know, your throwback and you're yeah. loving life. You used to be a corporate guy, right? You used to. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So let's start yeah. there. Like your history and your background and you know what. Yeah, you're sure. Yeah. And again, Mitch, thanks so much for having me on. This is yeah. a great way. I loved our pre-discussion. And I yeah. think, um, like you said, I'm a little probably outside the normal, uh, in, in some ways for your guests, but, but I'll try to, I'll try to keep it some of the stories and stuff relative to, to what they may expect yeah, and what definitely. they're used to. Sure. Um, so I kind of laugh. I, I call myself a, a well-seasoned Midwestern kid. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I'm an old white guy from the Midwest. <laughs> I grew up in the, I grew up in the sixties and seventies. Right. And, um, you know, I ended up with an accounting degree and uh, that accounting degree led me to meet salespeople. 
And, uh, you know, I do what every good young accountant does when you're, you know, your wife is three months pregnant and you're seeing salespeople run around and enjoy life. You quit your job uh, and, and you take up a sale. Yeah. You know, you just take up a family's coming. So you drop your salary 60 percent and uh, go take an insurance or go take a, a sales job. It's what you do. It was in insurance. Is that what you did? Yeah. Well, I mean, I was selling cap copiers and calculators door to door in L.A. Yeah. Back in the, if you can imagine a calculator, yeah. uh, I can used to be able to demo a calculator upside down backwards. Were these calculators like with those, with the tape in it? With the, the tape, old... Monroe, Monroe calculator. They were old school. My really still using that. I passed away in December. He was still using it. Up His 10 key. Yeah. We, yeah, we affectionately to, called the 10 key. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Great stuff. So I did that. I, of course, I got fired from that. Got fired from the next one. Got the la job of last resort insurance. Should have got fired somehow, you know, maybe the paperwork didn't come in on time. That's funny. And then I started selling. I got lucky. Yeah. And, you know, and I, and I knew everything there was about insurance after three years. Yeah. Um, you know, which you know, of course. Right. And so I started sending out these notes to CEOs to tell them they should start this division. And one guy called, you know, wrote my, wrote me back and said, come see me. Okay. And, you know, it turned into a job offer and I had a seat at the table. I wasn't on the outside as an agent. Was I was in, in. So this was in, the in California. Yeah, I was in California in insurance. All of a sudden I was a VP of something there you go. and sitting at the table and I was, wow. And that company got closed because of uh, regulation insurance. Uh, actually, it was during the Clinton years. They were uh, bringing in the uh, universal health care. Okay. And we happen to have a unique product and, and we were going to get legislated out. And I got sold with the business as my first corporate, you know, first corporate, uh, you know, kind of being tossed around. Yeah. And it led me oddly to a to an opportunity to apply for a job in Asia. Oh, OK. And I had a particular sales experience and they were looking for that for an American company to help start that in their local country operations. And so uh, next thing I knew, my family and I were you know, living in Hong Kong, right. uh, where I where I ended up living for 12 years. And working a few different jobs, but always living in Hong Kong and you only working spoke English, right? I I only spoke English. I only I still I never. It was fine. It was fine. And okay. you can travel. You could travel around, and you know, at, at the senior level, it's English mostly, right? And right. of course, there's a lot of exceptions, uh, but translation's a thing. Um, English documents help a lot. Okay. So yeah, I spent a lot of twenty something years, a lot in translation and different kind of communication. Think communicating in English in corporate is difficult. I'm sure. Can imagine uh, trying to share concepts and pass down expertise in insurance to different markets, different people, new generations. Oh, A fasc fascinating, fun time. I, I ultimately got to live in five countries, uh, work in probably, you know, 20. I'm sorry, live in five, work in 20, probably good, close knowledge of working style with about a hundred CEOs and uh, over the, what, over the training of other agents. To it, sell products yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's, okay. it was, it was a bit of distribution build. So building distribution, the systems required to do that, the operations required to build something, you know, alongside a current distribution model and service model, uh, the training recruitment, ultimately management of big sales, organ large sales organizations, I once in Indonesia, we had a crazy big art company, 250,000 agents, Wow, 400 offices across the country. One company, one company. Wow. And, um, Epic. yeah, my, my third month there, I recruited 45,000 agents, 45,000. Yeah. I guess we had, you didn't interview them all yourself. No, we had these mailbags. I, 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 my intention was to break the system and uh, because it was broken and they wouldn't, they couldn't recognize change. And I'm like, well, the only way I'm going to change these people is just completely is to break the system. So, so my strat so many new people that, that they would, they just, they threw up their hands and said, help. Right. I, I can't, I don't even know how to manage this. And uh, that was a whole, that's a whole fun story. Like the, some of the funniest outcomes you could ever imagine. Things I had no idea would happen. But I mean, um, 5,000 people, what do you do? Steal a sales force from another company and hire them all yes. the time? Oh, it's some funny stuff. That's crazy. Some, yeah, some really good strategy. It's a really good strategy. It's really integrated. Uh, it takes some time to set up, but we had an army. We had a good army. Yeah, you didn't have the internet and monster.com and all these online services, right? Yeah. Oh, it was all by paper. The wow. applications were all by uh 
I don't know what happened to it. I'm really regretful of one photo, which was the mailbags that were flying in from the different airplanes that we would go to the airport to collect the mailbags from the post office. And we just had this resumes in them. Yeah. With the application, like their application, their face, their photo, and, you know, and just mailbags in this guy's corner of his office, just like, (laughs) Forty. <laughs> he just, Unbelievable. It was a great, anyway, anyway, great fun stuff. So I had, it was a, an interesting career dynamic because of the languages, the cultures, the regulatory environment, different from market to market, the operational stuff. So really good fun. And, you know, as far as keeping your appetite going, um, you know, you're just switched on all the time. Right. Which ultimately leads to, you know, kind of becoming a little burned out. Yeah. You said you know, 20 plus years. Yeah, 20 something years of that. All over there. All over there. Yeah. 20, 22 years. And you're dealing with a home office here, right? So your time is middle of the night, all that kind of stuff. Regional office, global yes. office, um, all good fun stuff. Regulations across continents and, you know, all kind of interesting, just really fun. And especially for a lawyer, great fun. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. It's just super fun. Um, but, you know, along the way, um, I knew, you know, I knew this is going to come to an end. And, and I've seen how it came to an end for people. And, you know, what's the exit strategy? You know, how do you get out and not die? How do you leave corporate life and not, you know, not right. end up wrecked? Too much, yeah. Um, and for me, it turned into what's that third act? What's going to be, you know, so Mitch, yeah. what am I going to do when right. I'm 70? Well, at least you had the conversation. You you and I were talking off the mic about mental yeah. wellness and health. Yeah. Why do you think it's such a big topic in corporate America? There's a reason for it. I I was there and I have seen and I have seen so many instances of people really, you know, hurting themselves. Yeah. Um to stay in the game or for the money or because they had to. Yeah. You know, they don't have a I mean a lot of us are trapped in that system, right? It's hard right. to get out. Um so there was about 50 I got after that crazy job that that one I was describing, you know, I, I, I went to break the system and ultimately I did, but it kind of broke me, I think Maybe actually. It's like I got to go. Yeah. And uh, and they put me in Thailand with a pacifier and a nappy in the corner. And um, it's what a great you, job. What did your wife do when you were over there? Uh, it, well, ev- eventually uh, we were gone. We were separated. Oh, so okay. it en- ended up being divorced in Hong Kong. So, oh, yeah. So that first 12 years, uh, around the 10 years, we made about 10 years over there. And I think it was it wouldn't have mattered whether we stayed or there or stayed, you stayed here. Right. Um, you know, we probably wouldn't have stayed married. Um so I was single. And so I had a lot of time. I came to Thailand, a much easier job, uh, much softer. And so I was, I was on vacation in the U S and, you know, I wanted to pick up guitar. Okay. For whatever reason, just yeah, compulsion guitar before in your life. It's my third try. Okay. So, you know, I bought two as a kid, you know, but I played trumpet for eight years. So I was mus- I had some musical right, training, right? Right. not super inclined. Um, but I thought it was something I wanted to, I wanted to kind of do that for myself. No idea why. And I thought, and I want to spend money on a nice guitar to do that. You're adult, you're entitled at this point. I'm entitled, right? And um, I'm going to take lessons though. Okay. So I'm not just going to burn the money. I'll commit two years and then I'll see. Okay. Uh, and just, you know, cause I knew it's, it's not fun to play and, you know, and, right. and, and, you're not good at it and you don't enjoy what you're doing. Yeah, and then you're and then you're not good, and you st- it gets even. It's a cycle, right? And then eventually, it just sits in the corner. Exactly. Um, I kind of attribute that intentional stuff, and I, and I think you know, kind of this entrepreneurial stuff. You said, acc- you know, the accidental, right, and right. getting away from the accidental part, and you know, being more intentional. And I think that's one of the things in my life. You know, I was there was some intention there. I didn't have an outcome, an expected outcome on it. Other than I put some very, like for me, it was like a little gate, uh, just a gate point, just a checkpoint in two years. Okay. And, you know, I'm going to go and commit to that. And that, that led me to meet somebody um, who inspired me to, you know, write a song. So I had a guitar teacher and that led me to write, you know, write some songs. And that led me to kind of get out some old letters that I had written uh, as part of a book. Okay. So I had... You know, much earlier, um, I was a business guy. I thought it was reasonably successful. There were times I, I would love to have called my dad. He died when I was like 28. No. Oh. So I had all this time in corporate time. Love to call him. You know, dad, I got hired. I got, I'm right. a VP. Yeah. I'm a VP. Yeah. You know, I got fired. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> all these things, you you know, you'd want to share with your father. Um, wasn't there. So I, I started this book called Dear Dad. Okay. You were in Thailand at this point? 
Yeah, I was, yeah, flying around probably. This had been even maybe while I was in Hong Kong running, but I was sitting in Thailand at this moment. Got it. Uh, with a guitar teacher and he kind of inspired me to get, you know, to, to do the writing. Uh-huh. Um, and that, that led me to pull out, not that book, but a book called Dear God. And, uh, cause it, you know, whatever, I had more words around Dear God and I had actually just one, you know, so I had one letter that had a lot of words around it and we wrote a letter. We stole the words from the, from the book to create a song. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I didn't know how to write a song. Your book, so anyway. yeah, and it was my book. Yeah, it was my book. And it was just like, and it was funny because it's just pieces of paper, you know, writing. It's just notes, letters. You know, I was on the airplane, scribbling on my in my notebook, and um, it was interesting because I ran out of I ran out of letters. So you're just writing letters to, well, in that case, God. In this one, it was dear God. What's faith? What's love? What's hope? Uh, what's forgiveness? Is it more you questioning? things basically yeah okay. it's kind of like me um exactly like questioning it's kind of like did i get this right yeah is love this you know or isn't love this and how old were you at this point ken about 40 something when i was started writing these letters 50 ish 50 ish midlife okay yeah yeah i got some reflection right. i got some time to you know I, i've kind of seen some stuff by now right. right um so ultimately the book got driven by the guitar Okay. In a weird way, right? I ended up writing this book because of one intentional thing I did, not accidentally. You know, I did it with intention. Right. Well, so and, it wander through life, but you didn't and, want to do that anymore. So, and accidentally, yeah, this happened. <laughs> yeah, because you were like, "Well, I, I want to do this," and then something else came of it. And then something else came of it. You because I met I met somebody putting this into a book until your teacher was like, "Hey, you ought to put this into a book." Well, he was more about just write a song. Got it. And and the, the the craving and the enjoyment of writing the song, I when I ran out of words that I'd written, I realized, oh, I have to write more words to find more lyrics because yeah. I couldn't I couldn't in my brain I wasn't a songwriter, okay. I couldn't figure out how to just sit down and write a song. Right, right, right. Well, that makes sense. So I was stealing. It was kind of a when it was a clever. Now I can write a song. Yeah. Now I can conceptualize okay. how to do it. Okay. Um, but it forced me to start writing. I got you know rabid about writing more words. Okay. And then I got into the structure of the book. And I, and I think the structure of the book, uh, when I got that, I, that became the compassion. Um, that really became the passion, you know, was to complete that and to and to see as it developed and I fleshed it out. Was it something I really believed in? Um, was there something there? And and I think I did develop something that's kind of interesting. I've got this book of self. There's four parts to it. Okay. You know, book of self. And we talk about, you know, masking about yesterday's, today's, tomorrow. Okay. The battlefield of our minds, you know, okay. everything that's happened the, the today. Dear God book in four parts. Yeah. Yeah. And the dear God book. Okay. So there's these four parts to it. And then there's the, the, the other part is the book of self but, or okay. book of others between two people, uh, acceptance, forgiveness, compassion. Okay. Uh, then you get into the book of all, which is humanity, love, karma, service, more of the big picture. More of the big picture. And how do you kind of, you know, face like as you go as a human going through the yeah, world where you're breaking up life, basically. Yeah. Love. You got to have a lot of love towards fellow man. Um, uh, you got to have some karma, leave things, you know, just like grandma, leave things better than you found it. Right. You know, treat people like you want to be treated or better. Um, and then service being, you know, you should be in service to mankind That is kind of where I was at. I was thinking like, you know, isn't that important? Yeah. You know, not yeah. just being a, a net taker. Yeah. You know, but can we be a net giver to to you know to fellow people, right? Not just uh, not just draining resources, but somehow adding back. Yeah, you know that book, The Go Giver. He's Bob. Burke. Yeah. He's been on my podcast. It's it's funny because when we use the term, oh, it's great. It's really yeah. A go, he's a go giver. We use the term go getter, and it's really yeah, go taker. Like you're go taking things. That's why he made it the go giver. Go giver. Go giver, because you want to be. I say you always want to be in the long end of the giving stick, right? If everyone's yeah. fighting to give more to the other person, you imagine what the world would be like? Oh, it'd be unbelievable. It would be totally opposite of where we are now. <laughs> it would be the to it's actually the total opposite, right? Uh, and then the last one is like faith, hope, and prayer. Okay. You know, things that things depending on where you're at in the spirituality uh, spectrum, you okay. know, you're going to have different levers there on faith, hope, and prayer. Um, and so that's the topics, just 12 topics. And I cr and not really sure how, but in that entrepreneurial grind, right? The iterations. This is how this is how nutty I was when I was in Vietnam. Uh, I I had crafted the book, 
and I was starting to plan bits and pieces of how to execute this. How does a jar going to come together? What is a, what is a traveling podcast? And I, and I didn't even have that idea together yet. I had six whiteboards drilled in down my hallway in my apartment. So, you know, in Vietnam, you're like in these places, you're, you basically call up the, the, some guy and he comes over handyman with a couple of, you know, screws right. and some guys. And next thing you know, you got six whiteboards trying to drill down your hall. Just to be a place to you to put ideas down and stuff. Yeah. Just stand there and look at the wall and just write down ideas and think. Okay. A lot of just iterative thinking, um, you know, in that creative, pro in that creative process, get it out, and get it out, get it out, and, and get it out, right. and come back in the morning, and it's you know, it's there. Good business lesson, by the way. I, I was going to say that for me, this is a, yeah. a, a one of the best things that I ever did in my life was put up six whiteboards. Yeah, people up. Look, there's businesses that have war rooms. They call it the war room. You yeah, but it is yeah. A giant whiteboard, and they go and they put ideas down because you can't work it out in your head. It doesn't work that way. A little bit, I, you're going to lose things. I'm not that way. I, I'm for sure a, a, a tactile person. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, on the other side, I had a giant map of the U.S. On the other side of the hall? Yeah. Okay. Just opposite. And I was planning the trip, you know, the road trip, the oh, actual pilot. trip. Well, no, I'm sorry, from the U.S., from the U.S. No, so planning. Yeah, with this one when you were oh, I was in Vietnam now. You were in Vietnam. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You're in Indonesia and you're planning your trip, your, online, your podcasting journey. Yes. The United States from Vietnam. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, you actually, weren't working at this point, were you? Were you still working? Yeah. I had a yeah. Oh, yeah. I had the corporate, full on corporate oh, job. You didn't quit I, the job yet. This was all yeah. like pre. Yeah. Okay. I was a de deputy CEO. Oh, there you go. That's a big thing. <laughs> like, anybody clocked it. CEO, as far as I'm concerned, has a big, important job. I don't know what it is. I don't know what I was doing. I was looking at, you know, everything, everything, everything that CEO wasn't signing. That's right. Everyone has a title. Everybody's got a title. Right. You know, uh, it was my job was just whatever the CEO didn't want to do. There you go. <laughs> my deputy, like deputy mayor, deputy governor. That's always it, the person that does the work for the governor. I, it wasn't really that, you know, I, I'm not sure I really want to be a CEO too, though. You know, like the loneliest job on the planet. God, you're, who, who do you look up to? God? I, I mean, no. And men, mentors, you're on your own. For all the CEOs listening, you know, find that person you find that coach or mentor you need you do need one yes uh, because it is a really lonely job and it's i you know i've talked to a lot of them i've known a lot of them um you need you need somebody yeah because if you don't have anybody be at all yeah and you good. need six whiteboards there you go well, that's easy yeah you just get <laughs> call somebody to get on but it's easy in the corporate headquarters or wherever <laughs> it is it is easy in corporate headquarters um so it really you know that was where that's where I was during COVID and, and really, you know, finished the book, put together the idea, um, had all the planning prepared and started doing the little details to get everything ready, uh, planning a business, you know, the launch, the, really the launch of, you know, what is a, an, you know, a small right. business. We're starting a small business. Starting a small start business. In Vietnam during COVID where they total lockdown. Yeah, it was, uh, they had a, they had a pretty interesting strategy. Uh, the first one was lock the country. Right. Lock the country down. And for the first wave, uh, we were locked inside mostly. Uh, but just some cat, you know, masks here and there. Yeah. Um, no, there was no vaccine available right. for Vietnam okay. for the first year. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, we didn't have to take a vaccine. We'd have to, you know, there's no none of that. There was no real COVID running around. It, it would pop up here and there. They just locked the building or locked the city down. And like in China, you know, where it was ramping. Yeah. It, yeah. And you just, people would just disappear. If they, you know, exactly. like they just do whatever they yeah, want to do. Questions, you disappear. That's what I'm and it was great. There was, there was no COVID. Like, you know, we operated under a no COVID situation. Exactly. Um, until uh, then they opened the doors for a minute and, um, COVID. Yeah. and then everybody, and then it just, exactly. and they had the vaccine and, you know, and then it turned into a, Turned into a wild situation for a while, um, but it was it was really a great place to be. Uh, we did have I, I have to say I got lucky on the second wave. Yeah, uh, I was locked in my apartment. Basically, we were in lockdown for six months. Without oh, had they delivered food? How did you get food? You were allowed to go to the food uh, theoretically twice a week to go to the market. Yeah, you're allotted uh, time or something. But but yeah, yeah. And but basically, you know, they can control that each prov each commune and stuff and they allow people to go out. Um I had some I had some different I had a I had a good driver who had a military uniform. So he'd pick me up on the motorbike and we'd stealth around with a big white, you know, 
like we were being stealth because right. some big old white guy I mean, in the back I mean, of this I mean, motorcycle <laughs> driver and you got to sit on the back of the motorbike with him is that a car well, because in this case, the, you couldn't drive the car in the street. At this, it had gotten so bad the car wasn't allowed on the street. Yeah. Oh. So the only way you could you could move around was by um, was by motorbike, and then he had the green uniform, so he wouldn't get stopped. Um, so it was kind of cool. For yeah. for one month, the military dropped off food. Really? That was that was the height of the banana. That was bananas moment. Um, you know, but the military's oh, obviously it wasn't like you're like, you know what I'm gonna go back to, you can't get out. <laughs> there were no there were no flights. No flights, nobody let you in, nobody yeah. let you out. Yeah. Yeah. It's really hard to get out. It's good time um, for reflection though. I I was so lucky. Yeah. You know, Zoom calls in the morning and the afternoon. The rest of the time was for me to stare at my whiteboard, finish up the book, uh, work on the questions, think about what how am I gonna set this business up? Uh, what's it gonna look like? What's the expense structure? How long can I go? What kind of team do I need? You know, how do you how do you monetize um, a podcast? I mean, especially that's, this that's is what it was. Your your business idea was: I'm going to be an entrepreneur and I'm going to host a podcast. That was your business yep. idea. Yeah, and yeah, that was yeah. my marketing idea. I'm like, I'm never going to make money doing this. I'm not joking. Yeah. And so, what am I going to do? And you're like, Oh, we're going to do this. And you're making notes and from yeah. vietnam you're not even in the united states yet but you're gonna run this business don't even listen to podcasts um don't want to because i don't I, i've decided i don't want to know did you have equipment at this point did you i i had been so i had been playing with guitar with equipment and recording so i'm i was fairly you know the the equipment and knowledge i was getting knowledge on recording and stuff got it um so I had been doing the research, talking to the, the the guitar guy who was also an audio guy, kind of a good engineer. Got it. Um, so I was getting, yeah, so I was kind of getting my experts lined up. You know, I was talking to the experts. Did you know uh, what the podcast would be about at this point? I start when it started to come around. It 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 did. It all kind of came together. I I knew it was going to be traveling. Yeah, you and, and I and I'd be interviewing people, and then I kind of realized, well, I don't know anything about interviewing. <laughs> well, you know, things about training, right? I know about training. Yeah. Uh, I could, yeah, I could, I could, you know, synthesize anything into a training. And, but it really did. It hit me somewhere was to use the questions. Yeah. And I, yeah. so I came up with this, you know, I think it's a, it's a unique idea, which is all the questions, you know, 400 questions pre-printed and they go into the jar. Yeah, no, I think it's fantastic. And in that, and when I, when I got that idea, I was like, okay, that I can do like, this is, this is potentially different. It plays to my strength. Um, it'll be something I don't see it. Now I can look and see there's not a lot like this. There's nobody traveling. Right. Um, I know a guy I, for, uh, it's called the fermented adventure. He goes to. Oh yeah. And wineries and you know, stuff like that. Oh, fun. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, he's way smarter than I am. <laughs> uh, for me, that sounds like a lot more fun. Right. He gets to drink. So who wrote the, who writes the questions? So I wrote them from the book. Okay, so you pulled out from your book 444 yeah. questions. So I put up, you know, I sat down, I started, and, you know, when it was super painful, Mitch, if you, you know, you get to that, you've written the book, editors, you get through it, you've seen this word so many times over four years. Yeah, well, yeah, I started. Three years. Right. You just hate, yeah, and you hate the book at this point. You don't even like it. It's, your, it's, it's not even your friend anymore. Not out of it. People write a book that they put on the shelf, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's hard. Yeah. And so there I was. I had submitted it to the printing and everything. And now I had to face it page by page to extract the questions. Yeah, that's painful. It's like rewriting oh, the book again. It was literally rewrite. I had to rewrite every word a few. So I literally put up on the screen on one side was the letter. And on the left side, I organized some Excel spreadsheets and started writing cranking out, you know, content from the letter. What would I want? What this is what does this letter present to me? in a way of a question for somebody, a life question, somebody sitting across from me and try to put myself in that, in that position. And I think it's like, you know, if you're starting a business, you want to frame it in the way of the customer somehow. Right. Right. You, you know, Absolutely. right. Yeah. So, and, and that's kind of what I went about it was what's going to be that customer experience um, for the, for people as they sit down. And, and I did start to get through and, and analyze, you know, the, the questions from that viewpoint. And is it, am I going to get what I want out of it? Right. Um, you know, I'll come back and touch on the one point too. I, you know, I did for sure. I was going to monetize the pot and I thought yeah, I could make a business out of this, which point. turns out to be a little, a little stupid. Um, a little to your point, to put it in. <laughs> a little naive, <laughs> right. 
I'm a wee bit naive, but I'm okay with being a little naive because it still gives me hope. So, yeah, because sometimes you accomplish things that other people would be like, that was like impossible. And you do not <laughs> know any better, right? I, I did. I didn't want to know better. Right. Of course. I, I didn't want to know better. Blow up the um, whole thing here you were doing. You wanted to do this. So. Yeah. And partly I wanted to do it for me. Yeah. So it was cathartic and a lot. A lot, it, a, a lot of cathartic stuff. So it was a little self therapy. And I, and I thought, you know, I don't, and I want to see where it leads. Right. I, I, I'm kind of a real fan of what you start. It, that may not be what you end up. That's not the, the real end, right? right. It is that ability to start. So you never end up, nothing happens in a straight line. So you don't end up. So you were excited about that. Like what's going to happen? Who am I going to meet? What questions are they going to, how are they going to answer the questions? Yeah. But going back to the business model, I mean, you're a finance guy, you're a corporate guy. You, yeah. You kind of put together probably some sort of a business plan, right? In terms of yes. what you think it's going to look like. Oh yeah. What? Well, I don't think I could write a business plan for a podcast. I'd be like, okay, well, we're going to make stuff and <laughs> maybe we'll get some sponsors. Like I, I, you know, Oh, I have a whole white paper. Four years. I now have two sponsors that kind of cover my costs and that's, you know, <laughs> that's it. I have a whole white paper on it. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 I was a good strategy guy. I could write a lot of BS. The way you wrote it. Right? Yeah. It didn't. It, it, ha it did. And it, so there's some interesting things. The paper's not exactly, exactly correct. The paper, not really. Right. Um, and things may, I also know things in that paper may come, but they're going to come later. Yeah. I mean, some of it's a lot, Paul. There's no question. About yeah. That. Yeah. Quite often I'm a little bit, um, you know, it's like I'm ambitious, right? But I've got the timelines wrong. I've got the outcome pretty close. The experience of the sitting in with people was been was exactly like I imagined it. Really weird. You know, I role played and dreamed and thought so much about the driving and going to places and everything, going to hotels and checking out and find like it really was eerily what I imagined many, many times. Uh, the only, the biggest exception was the beginning was the way I knew people would answer the, obviously they'd answer the questions based on their own life story. Of course. But what I missed was that they would interpret the question differently than yeah, I right. wrote They're it. I was going to do that. Right. Yeah. 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 But I, you know, somewhere like Mitch, you should have seen my face when people's that way. Yeah. People start reading it's black and white, you know, and they're, and they're, exactly. and they're going over, you know, over in another direction. Right. Um, which That's is fascinating. Right, these guests. So we used a, we, there's a kind of a three, three ways. Okay. Uh, one is we do a kind of a simple post, not even a, just a cheap boosted post. Okay. Uh, two okay. bucks, like a $2 one on Facebook. Okay. The jar is coming to Tampa, Florida. Right. Be a, be a guest. Do you get a lot of responses to that? We get, we get enough. Yeah. Yeah. We get enough. Um, enough where people invite me into their homes, you know, that's what we're looking for. Yeah. Right. People, interesting people have a story right. and show, have a, wheel have wheel a place to go set up all your stuff on their kitchen table. And yeah, right. And uh, exactly. It. That's what I exactly. It. I used to do the same thing. I didn't do it at their kitchen table, but I would go into the conference room or I would go to their place. Yeah. I it up. I had the mic stands and the whole thing. Yeah. I wasn't doing video though in those days. You yeah, that's audio. You're audio only, right? I'm audio only. I'm doing some iPhone recordings for uh, snippets. Unless you have multiple cameras and stuff. Like that. Yeah. yeah, it's I could I've been looking at setting up two iPhones, um, which would which would, you know, it's pretty simple to do. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you end up with more files, more media. You know, it's more it's yeah. more data. I, it's when more I work. discovered Zoom during the pandemic, I'm like, well, I can do this. all. I don't need to go see people. I can get them on video. Now I got videos put up on a YouTube channel. This is great. And then I switched to the studio recently, but well, and I think for you too is, is the guests are now audio competent, right? Yeah. Right. They're much more competent First, than these. I connect with people around the world and they have headsets and mics. Yes. And they're all ready to go, you know, from Singapore or whatever. I've connected with people everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I think I've run it, you know, it's been an interesting uh, first first half and I, and I don't think every entrepreneur can can do it, but I've taken a break for a couple so months. on intermission now. Yeah, I was on a little intermission to step back You're still and still on intermission. I'm still on well, I, I took an intermission and then it kind of turned into some more work. Right. Uh, but I did take a full on break, right? I took a proper six week right. break, visited my kids, um, visited friends. So two weeks here, two weeks there, two weeks there. And then went back to that lake house you saw me at. And right. that was a real reflection spot where I was sharing with you that 
you know, the, the stories that I've heard from a couple hundred people, yeah. the amount of mental health yeah. uh, stuff that's come about has right. surprised me. Yeah. Um, their journeys and yeah. struggles, uh, not just the struggle of the mental health illness, but, but the struggle to get treatment, to find support, um, to come to terms with what's going on yeah. uh, with them or people around so people they love. Like a little bit of a new journey that you didn't expect. I didn't, you know, I did this, I did this kind of for me, right. You know, and, and, and I found out it wasn't about me or a third therapeutic time. Well, why don't, why don't we do this? Cause uh, it's 30 yeah. minutes in, let's take a commercial break. And that's what I do want to get into. That's perfect. Let's talk about mental health it's and perfect. all the things that you learned. And cause it's very relevant to even business owners. Everyone else is struggling. And yes. They, you know, they're all doing it silently. So let's roll the commercials and we'll come right back. Here's a word from our sponsors. Looking to market and grow your business? Or perhaps you're just getting started and want to hit the ground running. AWeber is the best choice for online email marketing and automation of your business. From maintaining a subscriber list to drip campaigns and landing pages, AWeber gives you tools and integrations that make marketing easy and fun. As our partner and sponsor, we use all their tools to promote the podcast and market our law firm. AWeber, the best alternative for online marketing. For over 30 years, the Alternative Board, or TAB, has built a thriving community of forward-thinking CEOs and business owners who want to radically improve their companies. Through unique combinations of one-on-one -on -one business coaching, participation in monthly TAB board meetings with other non-competing owners, a suite of strategic tools, and customized strategic planning workshops, TAB membership can deliver greater strength to your business and a better work-life balance for you and your family. All packaged in a streamlined and affordable service that the people at TAB invite you to try risk-free. Maybe you're looking to get into podcasting or you just want to market your business. Maybe you want to do it for enjoyment or because you have a message you want to get out there. One of One Productions is a New Jersey-based studio just over the George Washington Bridge that caters to the booming business of podcasting. They offer a comfortable atmosphere using the latest technology available to record your podcast. And they are a full service media company offering both audio and video production services, creating both audio and video podcasts, as well as video shorts for business and personal use. Professional audio equipment packages are available through their website for all budgets. And be sure to check out their podcast guesting kit created especially for our listeners. Follow the link in the show notes to learn more about all of our sponsors. And now back to our show. You know, when I used to do this on Zoom, I would just put the videos up. I mean, I'm not a video editor, so that's not going to happen. So uh, now uh, with the studio, <laughs> I can put this this stuff in when we do it, and then I just throw it up on YouTube. I edit the audio version that I know how to do. So, uh, but yeah, see, now I'm, podcasting. Now you're into podcasting. But I mentioned before that um, you know I think that a lot of people struggle with you know mental health. That's why it's such a big topic in corporate yeah. America. Um, I told you I want to connect you with my friend Michelle and, um, you know, that you started this journey. So, you know, keep sharing with me the kind of things that you experienced and, were, you know, the things that people started sharing with you. Yeah. So, there, you know, the as I was mentioned, it was it was the I think as I researched a little bit about mental health, uh, you know, it was on the reflection part. I was seeing, you know, exactly what those you know, one is there is a crisis. I mean, the first thing I was Google was mental health in America, you know, I just kind of went, just randomly typed it in. And the first thing that popped up was the White House signed, you know, this kind of seven point plan um, about a year ago mm -hmm. uh, to help battle it. And I was like, wow, okay, <laughs> okay, I haven't seen right. that in Reddit. And it was all really good logical stuff. Like they were trying to implement a couple of the big changes uh, that I think are kind of relevant is one is integrating it into medical. Uh huh. You know, and, and stop this nonsense of your physical health being right. a diff completely different system yeah, and operation. Mental health, because you, you know, it doesn't make any sense, right? These, the, it's it's it, you know it's connected, like, right? Like it's not real. Yeah, it's like it's not real, and it's a, and it does manifest itself physically as well. Yeah. So you know, you're you're going in for a heart attack. You didn't, you know, it may be physical, but it you know could a lot of that now, could be caused by stress. Is ninety percent of our problems. Yeah. So why? Are, yeah. So we're treating. So almost and no matter how you look at it, you're treating symptoms at the hospital, not root cause. Right. And and I'm a I'm a huge root cause guy. Um, so it's it was that was like oh I'm in oh that's interesting. And the other one was um, 
training at the workplace. To your point, bringing training and education to the workplace is a distribution point. So people can get that. We can get it in the knowledge and tools, resources in people's hands. And I've got a big education background. I mean, I've, I've not personally responsible, but I have been somewhere in the, in the org chart responsible for probably a million people being financial, becoming sitting down with and learning financial literacy, you know, in my time in Asia, okay. you know, we recruited a lot of agents, created a lot of seminars for clients. And a lot of it was really educating people on, on finances. So I've got a good training now. I know how to build training and distribute it, communicate it. So that was resonating with me. Um, you know, here's something that, that's kind of up my alley. I'm seeing it. I'm traveling. I've got a voice. I'm not a really big voice, but I'm trying to build a, vo- a bigger and bigger voice right. uh, and a platform for people. And I thought maybe I can do something. And a lot of people I met, as I shared with you, were becoming entrepreneurs out of their struggles. Yeah. You know, th- yeah. their life had taken them on some tour and they said, you know what? I'm going to be in service to mankind. I'm going to start a clinic. I'm going to start a halfway house. Right. I'm going to become a, a yoga teacher focused on mental health or, you know, you know, relieving the stress. And well, there, a lot of people weren't happy at work and a lot of them yes. didn't even recognize it or acknowledge it. And then when the pandemic hit, yeah. they're working from home, their life's changing. They're like, they didn't realize how, you know, I, how, how much they really didn't like what they were doing. It, it's you PTSD know, a in a way. Yeah, it, right, exactly. It yeah. becomes such a way of life. They were like numb to the fact that they were, you know, just distraught with life. And I think we all woke up a little bit, you know? I, I eat Mitch. It's like absolutely it's just perfect entrepreneurship. I mean, it's not, there's no coincidence that, <laughs> yes. you know, the great, what do they call that? The great resignation or something. There's no coincidence that everyone quit. They didn't stop working. Like nobody wants to like just wander around the earth. Well, you do, yes. but other people don't want to just wander around and talk to people. Yes. Like you're doing right. They want to have a job and they want to feel productive. And you know, like you said, give back or start a clinic yeah. or whatever. So they're not going to leave the workforce. They're just going to shift over. And that's why there's this big boom in entrepreneurship. Just different kind yeah. of entrepreneurship, you know. Yeah, and they were, I mean, they were accidentally intentional now, right? A so they, they the ended. were accidentally, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. This is the accidental part. I know that's the problem. A lot of people fail because they're not happy with what they're doing, right? They have no business training or background. You know, you went the opposite way. You had corporate training and finance, and everything, yeah. And you went out into the world. A lot of people they lose their job or they're unhappy, and then they just go out there, and they don't take a course, and they don't. Yeah, fundamental things that don't strategically plan things out. They certainly don't put whiteboards up in their in their room, <laughs> right? Because you're you're a planner, you're a strategic yeah. guy. So a lot of people don't have that, and it's you know leads to a lot of more frustration. Which now you got the so you get the PTSD for what you used to do. Then you're out in a world. <laughs> right? It's difficult to survive as an entrepreneur. I, this is you yeah. Know, it doesn't have to be, but it, some people don't see what they. The, the tools that are out there to use to make it easier for them, which is what the podcast is hopefully all about, you know? Yeah. I, and I, and I think it is good to talk about that, the, the, the planning and being consciously, you know, yeah. knowing, is this the right time for me? Okay. I've made that decision. I don't need to go quit tomorrow. Right. Yeah. I, I, like I did, which is, you know, you, you keep, planned, you didn't just quit your job and then figure it out. No, right. no. And, and it was a long time of planning and it took a lot of guts at the last, you know, even that last minute, yeah, you know, I, there's a lot of questions. Is this the right thing? Is this the right time? Maybe two more years. Why not two more years? Right. But then you get to the point where you could keep saying that all your life. Yeah, I was you 60, so I didn't have I didn't have many two more I didn't have any more rolls of the dice. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, and I wanted to do this while I can still move around. Yeah. Um, and and I hadn't, you know, it was time, right? For me, it was time, and 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 I had enough. I felt enough of potential ideas that something would work out. And so, you know, here I am, I'm filed a, uh, as we talked in, in a couple of weeks ago, I filed a, I've got a new LLC, uh, nonprofit based. I'm, I'm working through the, the final pages of the application to become a nonprofit and You're not start in New Jersey, right? We can't do nonprofit. LLC yeah. In New Jersey. I'm in Vegas, Vegas, Nevada, in, in Nevada, in Nevada. Right. Okay. Um, and you know, and I'm working through all those final details, um, and starting to put the sponsorship package together. So, you know, the idea now going forward as a business that I'm, that I'm kind of, we, I, we talked briefly is, is really to have, you know, on one arm is a, a, a kind of these revenue generators that help feed the ecosystem, that help right. feed the fund and fund the foundation. 
And so the podcast eventually earned some kind of revenue uh, or off my name, you know, public speaking or books or whatever we produce. Maybe people have sponsorships, corporate, you know, programs that they want to do things. Yeah. And then the training arm and build some training platforms around. And I've have mm-hmm. some different ideas and different chats, different discussions with people, some ideas around uh, bringing corporate training on, on awareness, even using the jar. Oh yeah. There uh, you go. Yeah. There's no, I, uh, I love the concept of the jar. I think it's intriguing. Yeah. Gets yeah. people excited. They don't know what they're going to pull out of the jar, what they're going to ask. I, you know, like, and, and as soon as you hear other people, the, the, the part that's one of the things that surprised me of the group session is as soon as you pull, somebody reads their own question, everybody has their own interpretation and their own answer in their head. Right. Yeah. Because they come with their life experiences, right? And yeah. Get it through their eyes. And it's totally, and especially if you're traveling around the country, I'm sure there's a total variation with oh, you're in the wild. North, Northwest versus yeah. down the South, right? It's totally yeah. different. It's cool. Yeah. And so, you know, if you imagine you seeing your peers, you know, people you may even have a, an issue with or the way that they, you know, on emails or the way they talk to the boss or whatever that internal kind of tension is, right? right. There's a lot of tension in the workplace yeah. uh, between departments, between department heads or, or you know, who knows. Um, and I think if you humanize people, you know, because we do tend to dehumanize and we're on Zoom now. So it's even a, even a bigger, it's easier even now because you're not seeing the person and, and having real contact. Right. Um, but to understand how they think and what they feel and their life experiences of these real life conversations, things that matter. Yeah. I, I think it would humanize us in that connections. And I think when you have connections with people, you know, that's powerful. Yeah. Um, it does allow you to give some grace to people, yeah. you know, like I understand, a you know, the person maybe. Yeah. She's always snarky on email, right. you know, and, you know, and, and like, and then you find out their life story and you're like, good God, how does she get out of bed in the morning? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, right? yeah you're mean, like, true. during the pandemic, I, you know, I met people afterward that I hadn't met that I knew I'd known yeah. for years, never met him in person. It creates a different connection. It's a different connection. Better connection, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's a much better connection. Yeah, we're and, definitely and like, not meant to stay behind a computer screen all for the rest of our no. lives. No. It makes my business much easier. I can connect with all kinds of people, but I do go. I still have coffee and lunch, and I want to see people and you know go to yeah, events yeah events to actually see people in person. Yeah, you know, yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at. You know, and and I think the the part. You know, that I've thrown up in the air a little bit, uh-huh. uh, maybe not so entrepreneurial, or maybe it is okay. uh, because you've seen more entrepreneurs right. than I, you know, entrepreneurs than I have, um, is I do get the question, what's next or, or what, you know, so you're doing the jar, what, what's going to happen? Yeah. And, and I've kind of said, I don't know. Okay. I'm com- and I'm comfortable in that, that I've started, I'm an activities guy. Like I know I've created this activity in this direction and momentum and I have a wake and you know, I am plowing through the universe, creating some dis, some discourse, right? right. Um, and there'll be something coming up. Something will rise up to meet me. You know, this path will kind oh, you're of definitely going back to finish. I'm on. Yeah, next week I start. My calendar is now. I'm now bling. We started the ads. My okay. my the machines fired up. Okay. Uh, and I just looked at my calendar for next week, and it's you be just in my area at any point. Um, I passed already. Oh, you've been through New York, New Jersey. That was the first half of your. Journey. Yeah, I went through the. I started in um, in Tacoma, Washington, uh-huh. and went all the way across the upper the upper half of uh-huh. the U.S. Sure. Uh, up to Maine, and oh, down the yeah. eastern seaboard. Okay, and uh, so I'm headed to Florida, and then down the the southern half, the the east. Uh, so how many go people west. in New Jersey did you interview? Big question. Think. Uh, Right around New Jersey, I think it was four. Maybe I was in one city. I might have just been in. What city were just, you in? Do you remember? I, yeah, Trenton, I think. Oh, yeah. So you were way south yeah. here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was way south. Yeah. I was I'm trying to think if I was up north. I don't think so. I think I passed through. Yeah, well, you passed a through. bike down and just kept going. So. Yeah. And I had eight in New York City. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, I did eight in New York. So I spent two, two uh, four day, um cycles. And you have a a car, a van, what are you driving around with? Yeah, so I uh, bought a, a Jagnormous Mercedes Sprinter. Okay. Uh, put a bunch of logos on it so you can't miss me. Got it. And uh, it's got all my gear in it. And uh, I don't I don't sleep in it. So there's a studio um, in there or no, the gear's got to be No, I didn't yeah, I didn't put a studio. You know, and I I think after even reflection I could have turned it into a studio. 
I could have turned it into um, a bedroom. You know, I could have yeah, turned it into yeah, my living space. That, so you can live in there, right? And I could have, and that might have been smarter economically. Yeah. Um, but it would have been tough traveling like that, honestly. Yeah. So you still a, stay in hotels sometimes. Yeah. Get a shower yeah. and stuff like that. Get a, exactly. Yeah, get a, you, you know, get an RV, then that would be different. With an RV, different. Then it's, but also then it's like traveling becomes a different animal. Right. You got driving. Driving, driving drive becomes places, a different. You can't drive everywhere, right? You can't drive everywhere. So this is great because it's it's not the super extended version, but it's a, it's a little bit extended. Uh, so it's big, uh, yeah, but I can car. still right. I can still park on most city streets. I can find a squeeze into a spot. Got it. Got it. Somewhere. And then you would go and meet them for coffee for an interview or where would you meet them? I We try to meet. I've done a lot of crazy. I've met in, in the craziest places, factories, uh, coffee houses. Those are not good. Okay. Espresso machines are not kind to microphones. No, that's right. <laughs> it's like, imagine being my editor. Yeah, that's um, so we've had some tough recordings. I think my, one of the things to improve this second half is the audio consistently good audio. Yeah. Uh, I haven't had the best audio. It's a tough you need time. A condenser mic like this that doesn't, I hear things all the time. You don't hear them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I was using a, maybe not the best mics. Um, right. I use some convenient wireless mics for convenience. Got it. I didn't yeah. want because no, all this wire, wire setup is nice wires here. You can't see them here, but I have a, a mixing board and the whole thing. So you yeah. need like a good audio sponsor. You need like a sponsorship from Yamaha or something. I I need yeah, absolutely yeah. Rode. I need right. Rode or Yamaha. You need yeah. the short Rode Shortcaster, and you can get the uh, what's the one the board that they have. Yeah. Those, so they have the mics and the, yeah, that yeah. would be perfect and, for you. And if somebody sponsored me like that, I'd set up, I'd, I'd go to the effort to set that gear up, you well, know, but otherwise you, uh, reach out to road and say, listen, I'm, uh, I'm on the, this is my, I'm on the road. So I should have I'm a roadcast. I'm on the road. I love it. That's okay. Board. I'm doing that one. And we yeah. hang up. I'm, <laughs> I just finished my pitch deck, which is great. Cause I just finished my spot like a little while ago. I just finished the, the sponsor pitch deck. Cause it's been, man, it's been on my, um, to do since it. January, yeah, January. I, yeah. When I've been, it's been iterating and iterating and I, I got to the end and I had a hard time kind of telling the, the story, the financial story and the journey. And I, and I just was able to squirt that out, like finally solidify it in my brain and, and get that document done. So I was really happy. Like this morning it was like, Oh man, now I can go start talking to people. Right. So I'm on the road, Yeah. I, you know, what a great one. I mean, Road has got a it's great PR for them. They is a on the road oh. podcast and he's using our equipment and yeah. Whatever. You're a nonprofit. So you're still talking about business, even though you don't have the final approval, you're in business. Yeah, I'm still yeah, still in business. Yeah. yeah I'm, I, I'm I got L, and it's filed as a nonprofit, right? right. Exactly. Um so I love that. I'll yeah, I'll, I'll so let you know yeah, how it goes. Creative, you know. Yeah. Not just um, a lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. I found, you know. Some of my favorite, I have a great lawyer story one time. I'll tell you offline. Yeah, awesome a young, thing, right? a, a young, thing. a young, uh, well, it was a fun one when I had to, when I was in that big job, the, the big crazy one in, in Indo, I had to go fire the largest distributor. And, uh, and the, and the, and the main attorney, uh, and it was kind of one of the, it was like a dirty, nobody really wanted, I mean, it was a terrible thing to do. Yeah. And, um, no, like get Ken to do, it. we don't want to do it. Yeah, exactly. And, and so regional kind of made the locals wouldn't do it. Right. And, uh, but the regional was forcing it. And, uh, so, you know, it turned out to be me <laughs> and, uh, and rightly so. Um, and so the, the, the attorney that sat on the board with us, yeah. he, he was mysteriously unavailable. Right. Um, <laughs> so he sent his junior kid, right. right? He sent the, he sent the like, you know, the young, bright right. attorney. And I still remember we were sitting there in the car on our way there. We we're pulling into the parking lot of this fancy hotel to meet them for a, a auspicious dinner. Mm -hmm. And, you know, which turned out to be, you know, handing him some letters. And um, he looked over at me and he said, I'll never forget this night in my entire career. <laughs> because of what you did. Because and this guy was huge. I mean, he was legendarily large distributor. Like you wouldn't norm like and he was a. He was a legend in the business, in the country, in the business, even in the region. Back to our corporate office, he met with the chairman of the board. I mean, he was. Yeah, he was. It was a big deal. Yeah. Uh, this guy was giddy excited as an attorney. Yeah, because he got to do all this stuff. He got to do it. So um, I know anyway. we're out of time, but. Yeah, what's, side story. What's next. I mean, is there a next yet or you're going to finish out the podcast and then see what. 
life. Yeah, continue. Field. Yeah, I'm gonna finish. Gonna finish the podcast out. Um, start. You know, I'll start the mental health. I've got the little mental health chat chat going, um, and it's really to build out the foundation. You know, I yeah. think now, but continue yeah. to. So I'm gonna do my 400, 111 cities, 444 people. Great. I'd love to meet somebody along the way. Um, you're half, you know, on you're our, halfway through. You got 55 cities, and yeah, I got 50 50 something cities to go. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, our stuff's all on the website. You can find watch out where I'm going to be. Watch for your sprinter van. What's the next city you're going to? Once your little break. I'm over? going to, um, I'm Atlanta. Then I'm going to Savannah, oh, down. Jacksonville, Tampa, Not Pensacola, Charleston. No, I was going to Charles. I canceled it. Yeah. I canceled it. Much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I'd been to South Carolina and, uh, just, uh, something else happened and I said, okay, scratch it. <laughs> All right. So if anybody's listening, you know, you see the jar, say hi to Ken um, and we'll uh, we'll have to check in, you know, a little ways down the road and find out what your next yeah. part of your journey is. But if anybody's listening, you know, the lessons here are you can do anything you want, if, but if you plan it out a little bit and then life kind of reveals itself, but you still can't just throw caution to the wind. I, let, I, let I do like that. Yeah. Example, you know, be intentional. Right. Absolutely. Well, Ken, I can't intention. thank you enough on a Friday afternoon. Um, we're going to roll the commercials and then, uh, or the closing credits, whatever they're called. And um, then we'll, uh, we'll check in another maybe six, eight months, see where you are. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. All right, Ken. Thanks. Thanks, Mitch. Thanks everybody. Thank you for listening to this episode of the accidental entrepreneur opening and closing music written and performed by Howie Moscovich and made to order music. For information about Howie and his music services, please follow the link in our show notes. If you like the podcast, please tell others about us. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, on Amazon Music, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and most of the other podcast directories. If you like what you hear, please leave us a five-star review and feel free to share our episodes on social media. If you have any questions or comments, ideas for the show, or you'd even like to appear as a guest, reach out to us by email at info at com. The Accidental Entrepreneur is hosted by Mitch Beinacker and produced by Beinacker Law. If you'd like to learn more about our business and legal services, you can find us on social media or visit our website at com. Thanks for listening. and Be sure to subscribe to our feed to be notified of all future episodes.